Ooh, baby. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another fun little installment for Ark's Pokemon Draft League Season 8. Um, this week we have a really cool format to show off. Uh, this week we are doing monotype battles. So for those of you that don't know what monotype means, uh, basically everybody's team this week has 10 Pokemon that have a common typing. And we did our best to kind of separate those typings so nobody has a clear unfair advantage. Um, so for instance, we'll have like normal against psychic, uh, water against fighting, that sort of thing too. Cause, uh, you know, we don't want to have like a ground versus like fire matchup or anything like that. That's a little bit hard to, uh, to get over. So, uh, that's the format for this week. Um, our opponents this week are the one and Ambipom all-stars coached by Alex. Um, nice to see him back in the season. Uh, after taking a little break. So we we have some big stakes on the line. Um, there's only, what, uh, out of the, I think, 12 teams, only six of us have won games. And after this week, only three of us will, will uh, still be in the undefeated column. So we want to be one of those three teams. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and let's hop on into the team builder and see what we have to work with this week. So uh, we drew Mono Poison. Uh, mono poison is really really cool uh, I have never used like dedicated poison types for anything like this before so I think getting poison is one of the more unique teams I didn't want to get stuck with something like water or fire because I thought like using those types I, I've done that before and we want to do something different so um, our opponents this week uh, drew mono fire ironically enough so Alex's team is Torkoal, Rotom Heat, Blaziken, Simiseer, Embor, Magmortar, Rapidash, Magcargo, Pyroar, and Talonflame. So a lot of scary threats on his side of the field. Um, obviously having poison types, I am incredibly weak to both Psychic and Ground types. And a lot of fire types like Blaziken, Embor, Magmortar um, have access to a funny little move called Earthquake. Um, which can really run through my team if I don't uh, if I don't play around it super, super carefully. So there are holes in the lineup, but some of the best things that we can do to counteract that is that first one on the list. No nicknames this week, uh, but we got Tentacruel with a Focus Sash. Uh, Tentacruel obviously going to have to be a, a big player in the matchup this week. Um, so we're going to go Max Attack, Max Speed, Jolly Nature, and we're going Swords Dance Tentacruel, uh, or Tentacruel <laughs> with Waterfall, Poison Jab, Rapid Spin, and Swords Dance. Um, so the intention here is to get up a Swords Dance. If I get lucky, then maybe I can get up a Rapid Spin for a Speed Boost, and then Waterfall should just kind of run through everything. Uh, I'm a little concerned about Torkoal just kind of setting up the sun in my face for a Speed Boost Blaziken getting in my way. Um, Speed Boost Blaziken is absolutely terrifying, by the way, and uh, there's nothing that I can really do to combat it if it gets going. Um, so we really want Tentacruel to be the answer to that. Um, my full team this week, you can see uh, right beneath me, is Muk, Alolan Muk, Crobat, Swalot, Amoongus, Salazzle, Garbodor, uh, Dragology, and Toxtricity. So what I was thinking when I built the lineup was, well, Amoongus is really, really good, but obviously having the grass as a dual type is going to make it pretty ineffective against a lot of fire types. Um, I can only choose one of the Mucks just due to Species Claws. Um, Salazzle is just kind of boring in my opinion. Um, and I have secondhand trauma from seeing that thing in Randats just set up Toxic and go for Protect and Substitute interchangeably. And that's not the way that I want to win a game. So, and then Garbodor is just Garbodor. It's garbage. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the thought process there. So we have Tentacruel on the team. Uh, let's go straight down and talk about Muk Alola with a Mago Berry for that one-third HP regeneration uh, with a Gluttony ability. So every time I go beneath half health, um, I should be able to eat that berry, and I decided to go Rock Tomb, Recycle, Toxic, and Protect on this thing. So a uh, little residual chip damage from that Toxic. Um, recycle to get that berry back because we're a very, um, we're a very tanky boy, to say the least. Uh, Rock Tomb's there for some speed control, and then Protect is obviously there just to kind of get some extra, extra poison chip. So that's the muck for this week. Only having a ground weakness is really, really good for it. Uh, next up, we have Swalot. Uh, um, Swalot with a Shooka Berry. We're going Stiggy Hold, so no knockoff shenanigans here. Uh, max HP, and then we're going to go Split Defenses. We're going to run Earthquake because ground type moves are good against uh, fire types. Both of our teams just get absolutely destroyed by ground. Um, and we're going to go Stockpile, Sleep, Talk, and Rest. <laughs> so uh, this thing is built to survive, 
And uh, if given the right situation, we can we can get into a bit of a grinder with Mr. Swallow here. And the Shookaberry is there just to offset some of that ground type damage in case we run into a situation where that happens. Um, next up, we have Toxtricity Loki with the Choice Scarf. This thing is pretty nasty, I'm not gonna lie. Um, having the Punk Rock ability uh, makes all of the sound based moves that I have uh, like 1.3 times damage. So we have max special attack, max, or not quite max speed. Uh, with a little bit of defense investment, so that speed is meant to outspeed plus one uh, Jolly Blaziken. Um, so we're going to run Boom Burst, Overdrive, Sludge Wave, and Volt Switch. So a really good turner, um, Boom Burst, and Overdrive deal. Honestly, pretty insane amounts of damage. Um, this thing is pretty nasty. I was going to run a Throat Spray Toxtricity right away, but the speed just doesn't really match up to things like... Blaziken, Simiseer, Rabidash, Talonflame is also a big threat on his team if he goes like Sword Advanced Talonflame with Gale Wing stuff. Um, so this was a big check to those answers there. Um, next up we have a cool Crobat set. We're going to go a uh, Max Attack, 232 Speed, 24 HP, Infiltrator, Scope, Lens, Crobat uh, with Cross Poison, U-Turn, Roost, and Toxic. Toxic, obviously, just to kind of get some poison on some like not super high speed priority targets. Bruce for a little bit of healing, U-turn for a little utility, and that cross poison with that scope lens is meant to get some big, big crit damage. So uh, that Crobat's really, really cool. I love Crobat, um, and having it on the team is really cool as well. And then last but not least, we have um, what I didn't think would be super, super great in this matchup, to be honest. Um, but for obvious reasons, you know, Dragalge is a uh, Dragalge. So uh, com combined with Tentacruel, these were my two biggest, like, resistances to the fire typing. Uh, so we're going Air, Blue Air Balloon Dragalge. So obviously we want to we wanna take a hit before we're taking any ground type damage. We're max HP, max special attack, modest nature with adaptability. So that Draco Meteor and Sludge Wave damage. Ooh, so, so, so good. Hydro Pump, obvious. It's a water type move. And then Toxic Spikes. Uh, I thought that maybe I would lead this thing. It could maybe take a hit or we get a favorable matchup. We get up a couple layers of spikes and uh, then we kind of just go to town. Um, the only oversight that I will say with this team is um, maybe I should have tried to find a rock setter. Um, I don't know if any of my team knows Stealth Rock. Some of them might know spikes, but obviously against fire types, you know, getting that hazard damage can be really, really beneficial. Um, but you know, Hindsight's 2020. That's what we got for the week. Um, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the match here. So, uh, a few things that I'm noticing right off the bat. Uh, Rotom Heat is obviously a pretty big threat to Tentacruel with its electric type moves. Um, Blaziken gets access to Thunder Punch. Rabidash has Wild Charge. So, my Tentacruel is looking not fantastic, but can put in some big work in the future if. I get it in in a favorable matchup. Magmortar is there, which can do unholy things to my team if I give it the chance. Uh, a really cool Magmortar set that I think would have been really cool for him to run um, would be like a Flame Charge Belly Drum set. You know, you set up a Belly Drum, get a Flame Charge for a plus one speed boost, and then you just go to town. Um, so I'm a little scared of what Magmortar could do, even though it's a big special attacking machine. Obviously, Gale Wing's Talon Flame is very, very stressful to deal with too. And then we have Torkoal for sunsetting shenanigans as well. So um, that firepower is really going to come in hot. So I'll make sure that my music and stuff is off here, and let's hop in. Good lucks are exchanged. I decide to start Dragalge. He goes into Torkoal, and I feel pretty good uh, right off the bat here. You know, he can go for his Stealth Rocks if he wants. But Torkoal is really not doing anything to Jigalgi, especially with an air balloon. At most, he could like Solar Beam or like Heat Wave, Lava Plume me. So I see this as a pretty good opportunity to uh, get up my spikes. He goes for some Stealth Rocks. I'm just going to go for a second layer. And if he wants to use Rapid Spin here and, and call that out, that's totally fine, I think. Um, I can kind of just outlast this thing, throw some damage at it, stuff like that. So, uh, But he goes for Stealth Rock again. So I'm a little puzzled. Uh, I was not able to see what his team was. Maybe this thing was choiced in some regard. Um, but he decides to stay in here, and I'm just going to take this as an opportunity to fire off a Sludge Wave. And unfortunately, uh, we do get a crit to start the game here. I'm not sure what move it was going for afterwards. Um, I find it hard to believe that a regular Sludge Wave was going to kill a Torkoal. Torkoal is like relatively bulky, so a bit unfortunate that we get a crit there. So my apologies, but... Um, you know, we'll use the it's Pokemon <laughs> excuse every time it works in our favor. 
and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it for what we get. So Torkoal goes down here. In comes Rabidash. And he goes straight for a wild charge, which is neutral, or not neutral damage against me. I think it's it's really cool in this regard because um, Dragalge kind of gives the illusion of being a water type in this situation. So maybe he thought wild charge would do some good damage. Maybe that's the best move that he had to hit me with my air balloon still. Um, but that's going to be a resisted hit for me. And Dragalge is just going to like absolutely eat that up. Uh, um, so... We're going to take 11% damage. He does pop our balloon, but we go for a Draco Meteor here, and he goes all the way down to 2%. So uh, the roll here was a 93 to like 107 roll, so we had a 50-50 chance to kill him. Uh, unfortunately, we don't quite get it. We go down to half of our special attack, but I'm still not feeling very threatened. The high horsepower does come out. Um, so now we know that like the wild charge was just there to kind of pop the balloon. We take a, a decent amount of damage here, but Dragalge is tanky. We take down the Rabidash, more up 6-4. In comes Talonflame now. So that's that's two mods with heavy duty boots that I'm noticing right away. So I think that he was very cognizant of the, the potential damage that Hazards could do to his team, uh, which is a good play on him. Uh, but in comes Talonflame, and I'm very scared of like a Swords Dance here. Um, so I don't really want to give it any free real estate. So the best thing that I can do here is, I think, just go for some chip damage and take some of that uh, utility away. He goes for Steel Wing, maybe going for a defense boost. So an interesting tactic. We fortunately live the second hit, take him down to 6%. And I decide here that I actually kind of want to preserve my Jigelji. Um, I very well could have just let it go down and accomplish the same thing. But in this scenario, and, and you'll see it actually kind of works in my favor a little bit later. Um, Kobe, what are you doing, bud? Roommate's cat is causing havoc. But um, but I decided to save my Dragalge here because I'm anticipating just a third Steel Wing to come in here. And if I ever need to sack something in the future or get like a favorable switch in, I can just swap in my Dragalge, have it take the rocks damage and die. And then I get a free switch in afterwards. So I decided to go Crobat here because we can resist the hit. He does fortunately miss. Wouldn't have done too much damage anyway. We go for a U-turn, which was a like six to seven percent roll, uh, <laughs> or maximum damage. So it was just enough, um, and then we get some utility back into my Toxtricity here, because I'm thinking the most um, favorable outcome for him here is just to go Blaziken and start going for speed boost stuff. Um, so I want to have the Volt Switch utility here and like Boom Burst and Overdrive are doing insane amounts of damage to Blaziken. So in comes Rotom though. Uh, so we're just gonna Volt Switch out of here. And this is the point where we decide to sack the Dragalge, because it's not really going to do a whole lot. And he does go for Defog. So, as the rest of the match kind of plays out, him not getting a Defog doesn't matter much. But, we do get a free turn, and we get a free swap into Tentacruel. After doing a quick little calc here and there, trying to see how much that we could take from it, like a Discharge or a Thunderbolt, uh, we can tank it, because Tentacruel Special Defense is out of this world. So, we lose nothing from just going for a Swords Dance here. And, and this is the, the path to victory that we've gotten. Volt Switch comes out, does 52%. So that's a lot of damage. <laughs> so maybe Thunderbolt takes us out. I don't know. Maybe he didn't have it. But in comes Magmortar. And at this point, I'm thinking, well, Tentacruel is faster than everything that he's got. So unless the Blaziken has Protect um, for Speed Boost, uh, there's nothing that he can really do to stop my Tentacruel now. So we're just going to Waterfall in succession. I'm just going to kind of let the game play out from here. Rotom comes in. We're just going to keep sticking to our guns, go for a Waterfall. I knew that Tentacruel was going to be huge in this matchup, and boy, was I right. Um, I was so fearful of, like, an Earthquake or something from, like, some Scarfed Mon just to deal with it. But um, fortunately, he doesn't have it, and we're going to take a 5-0 victory. So... GG's to Mr. Goodry, a.k.a. Alex, a.k.a. the Ambipom All-Stars. Uh, we're going to improve to 2-0 on the season. We're going to have a pretty solid differential moving forward. So uh, next week, won't spoil anything for format just yet, um, but we will await kind of the results from the rest of the league. We still have a full week before we have to get all of our games in since the uh, the change for this season was to get everybody's games in on a two two week kind of time frame, which I think has been really good for people and it, it doesn't cause as much stress on people's schedules so uh that's it for me thanks for watching everybody i appreciate it as always 
uh, we'll improve to 2-0, like I said. And uh, we'll look to keep the ball rolling. We'll see you later. Peace.